Hey, this is Warren Redlick. A lot of talk about where Tesla's going to locate their next Gigafactory, next Gigafactories over the next few years, but where's a good place for Tesla to locate their next Gigafactory? I've been pushing Giga Orlando. I'm big on Giga Osaka, by the way. I think Osaka, Japan would be brilliant, but I'm going to explain to you why Giga Orlando makes a lot of sense. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, so as you see, I've got a long list of reasons over here. Let's go through them. The first thing is people want to live in Orlando. Elon talked about when they chose Berlin and Texas, Austin, Texas, as locations for gigafactories. They spe he specifically said that they thought about where do our engineers want to live? Where do our employees want to live? Let's locate our, our factory, our locations in places where people want to be. If you locate your factory in places where people want to be, it's easier to recruit employees to come work for you. And this is, as I mentioned up here, if you compare Sparks, which is where the first Gigafactory is, Sparks, Nevada, outside of Reno, and you compare Brownsville, Texas, which is where Starbase is, the southern tip of Texas to SpaceX, it's harder to get people to choose to live in Sparks, Nevada, or in Brownsville, Texas. There, there, there's nothing exciting around the area. I mean, you know, Reno's okay, Lake Tahoe's okay, but it has, as I understand it, it has been somewhat difficult for Tesla to attract employees to these locations. You know, Fremont, for example, is not a terrible location, but it's a high cost location. There's a lot of great things about Orlando, but one of the biggest things is people want to live in Orlando. People want to live in Florida. People are moving here. I live, for those who don't know, I live about an hour from Orlando, a little less than an hour from Orlando. I live near Canaveral. And it's there's so much good things about Orlando. And just plain and simple, you just look at the numbers. Florida is the number one state that people are migrating to. They're leaving other states and coming here. They want to come here from other countries. They're coming here from Canada. This is a great place. Do you choose a place where people want to live? And it means it's easier to recruit a workforce to work in your factory. And that's, so that's one huge advantage. And there's examples of why this is. Number one, I have a third on the list here, but Disney and Universal Studios. There are a lot of attractions in Orlando and Disney is like, and this is the thing, like people don't understand Disney because I live in Florida and I have a lot of friends who live in Florida. I understand this. When Disney is nearby, people who are far away, it's like, okay, Disney's a place you go on a trip to once or twice a year. No, when you live in Florida, there's people who go all the time. The closer you live to Disney, if you are a Disney nut, and there's a lot of people who are Disney nuts. People just go there all the time. They go there like every week and they get, there's deals for Florida residents to get annual passes. We pay less than other people to get passes to go to Disney. It is hugely popular. I'm not that much of a Disney person myself, but it's popular. I do like the Harry Potter stuff at Universal Studios, but I still don't go that much. But, you know, having these kind of attractions to go to is a big deal. Another big thing about Orlando, why Orlando is a great location for Tesla to put a Gigafactory is the universities. University of Central Florida, I got a graphic for this. If you, this is a map of the major universities that are near Orlando. I've got Disney and Universal on the map. I've got SpaceX on the map as well. But University of Central Florida is the second largest university in the United States after Texas A&M. I was curious about that. University of South Florida is a big university. University of North Florida is a big university. University of Florida is a spectacular top tier university with great engineering. Pro a lot of these have great engineering programs. Embry-Riddle is not particularly large, but a great engineering program. So when you want to recruit employees to a high tech company, you want to have access to great. And I've left out University of Miami is, you know, three, four hours south. Florida Atlantic University, Florida International University. There's a lot of stuff in South Florida, too. There's a lot of great univers uh, there's there's a lot of great universities in the area. Florida State's not that far away either. Florida State's up uh, to the northwest of University of Florida, a few hours away. So there's a lot of top tier universities graduating people who have a connection to Florida, live in Florida. They know Orlando. They go to Orlando. So, and it's not just because you know the the line workers aren't necessarily university graduates, right? The the people working on the assembly line, but the college age population is a proxy for the other people who are not necessarily university students who are still valuable workers. People think there's a lot of people who think that Florida is just a place with a bunch of old people and, you know, rich people living in golf courses and stuff like that. 
Florida is very diverse. It's the third largest state. It has a lar- It does have an older population on average compared to the country as a whole, just because there's a lot of older, very old people living here. But there's a lot of young people. There's a lot of people with a lot of energy. It's a great place for a labor force. And on top of that, SpaceX is nearby. Think about the importance of having SpaceX basically an hour away from Orlando. If you're Elon Musk, right? You're going to go visit your job site. You got to go to Berlin. You don't have anything else around Berlin. But if he's at Orlando, he can just hop over to SpaceX. If he's at SpaceX, he can hop over to Orlando. And SpaceX and Tesla have a long history of collaboration. The engineering teams for SpaceX, the material science teams for SpaceX in particular, help to develop the steel that is also being used in Cybertruck. There's a lot of back and forth where employees in one company will take a break and go work in the other company, or they'll they'll split their work between the two companies. SpaceX and Tesla encourage that. So having SpaceX and Orlando, Gig Orlando near each other has tremendous potential for getting things to work together, for, for the two companies to be able to continue their close working together. And and look, if you're Elon Musk, wouldn't it be nice if your Gigafactory was close to SpaceX? I mean, they're locating, look at Austin. SpaceX is building operations in Austin. Boring Company is based in Austin. Neuralink is building operations in Austin. And Tesla has the Gigafactory in Austin. This makes life a lot easier for the CEO. And it encourages that, that cross-company collaboration that Elon likes having in his companies. Then that seems to be working well for all of them. Boring Company is headed up by a former SpaceX engineer. So another important thing to understand about Orlando and Florida is there's no state income tax and Florida is a business friendly state. And I mentioned I have Governor DeSantis on the list. I know Governor DeSantis is now a controversial figure because that's politics in America today. But the fundamental reality is that DeSantis has been good to Tesla, SpaceX. He's been, he's been good to the boring company. Uh, Elon has said good things about DeSantis. So it, it seems like Governor DeSantis, the pro-business government. There's a lot of businesses moving to Florida. Just people want to come here. Businesses want to come here. The, the local governments seem to get that if they attract business, then it makes, that it draws more business to their state. It draws more business to their city. The Miami mayor is known for this. Orlando is doing a lot of really cool things like that. My, my cynical side is, well, you can steal a lot more money from the people if the people have more money. <laughs> so. The real reason politicians want economic growth is that it enables them to steal more because there's more to be stolen. But regardless, you know, why did they locate in Texas? Business-friendly state. Why did they locate? That's why they would locate in Orlando. They want to be in business-friendly places. Sparks, Nevada. Nevada is a business-friendly state as well. So that's why. But with Orlando, you combine the place that people want to live with the business-friendly state, and this makes it much more attractive. Another thing that I get people saying, well, Florida isn't a good choice because you want to be close to your customers. Hey, if you're not paying attention, Florida is the third largest state and Florida has a lot of Tesla buyers. It actually has a great supercharger system. I think Florida might have the best array of superchargers of any state, except for Sebring. Even not if you're watching or Drew Baglino, if you're watching, please put a supercharger in Sebring, Florida. I don't go there anymore, but the people in Sebring need a supercharger. The people driving through Sebring need a supercharger. So Florida is the third largest state. Georgia is the eighth largest state. Atlanta is a big city. If you look at the distance between Orlando and, let's say, the East Coast, the the East Coast that people are concerned that you want to get closer to, Orlando is 700 miles closer to, say, New York City than Austin, Texas. If you look at Atlanta, it's close to Atlanta. If you look at uh, North Carolina, Virginia, Washington, D.C., that whole area, Diego Orlando is closer, is not maybe as close as you'd like it to be. And yes, would the research triangle in North Carolina be a good option? Yeah, that's probably a good option too. I'm not saying that's not a good option. But when you look at everything, I think Orlando has advantages over that. Being closer to SpaceX and being close to Disney. And something I got on my list here, ports. Orlando has access to the Port of Tampa, Port Canaveral. There's, you know, there's tons of, people don't know this about Florida. Florida has massive amounts of coastline. There's lots of ports. It's a great location for a lot of reasons. And, you know, being close to those ports means it's easier to ship your cars somewhere. If you want to ship the cars out, it's easier to bring materials in. It's closer to ports than Austin, Texas is. I think it's closer to ports than Berlin is. So that's a pretty significant advantage. If you're bringing in, you know, raw materials like nickel or lithium, you know, mined, mined material from Chile, you're, you're, you're closer to all of that, to let's say Latin America, like 
there's there's you know lithium being produced in Latin America, there's nickel being mined in Latin America, and you're getting all that and you're bringing it somewhere. You know, Austin's close to that too, but the port is much farther from Austin than it is than the ports in Florida are from Orlando. So a lot of big advantages here. Another thing I would just note is Orlando, I think Miami as well. Orlando is a tech forward city. There's this uh, place called Lake Nona that's really promising. I see a lot of tech forward stuff in Canaveral, by the way. This is a good place for me to mention that I'm going to be speaking at TeslaCon Florida in Cape Canaveral, October 21 and 22. You can get more information about that at TeslaCon Florida. There's going to be a bunch of speakers talking about Tesla in a variety of different ways. Great event. Please check it out, teslaconflorida.com. But that whole tech forward thing. So Canaveral is very tech forward. Miami, I give Miami credit. Miami's tech forward. But Miami, there's just to be clear, people say, what about Giga Miami? It's really hard to find a lot of land near Miami and South Florida in general. It's just like the, the place is basically built out. Orlando, as much growth as there's been in Orlando, there's still a lot of room to grow. If you look at the area between Orlando and Canaveral, let me put this back up on the screen. If you look at the area uh, between Orlando and Canaveral, that area under where it says University of Central Florida, there's a lot of empty space that could be developed. There's a lot of development going on. The tech forward part, there's a community called Lake Nona that I have on my uh, list here. Lake Nona is a city that's sort of being built now. It's a very tech-oriented city. Uh, Arkimoto, by the way, has their second largest operation in the United States in, in Lake Nona. I met with the people there. Disney is moving a bunch of stuff to a campus in Lake Nona. Apple is, I've been told Apple is building a campus in Lake Nona. A lot of growth there. Now, one of the other things, I get this stuff all the time about Florida. Oh, the sea is rising or, uh, you know, you can't build in Florida because it's all swampland. I'm like, hey, have you been to Florida? Like, what are you talking about? We have skyscrapers in Florida. We have SpaceX is building a Starship factory in Florida. We got launch facilities in Canaveral. And you can do stuff in Florida. People, people, ask me, people ask me that all the time about the idea of boring company tunnel systems in Florida. Like, well, we already have tunnels. Port of Miami has a tunnel. There's a tunnel in Fort Lauderdale. You can do tunnels in Florida. You can build stuff in Florida. I, Disney's in Florida. They have big stuff in Disney. You can definitely do stuff in Florida. This is not an issue. If you watch the NASA Space Flight Channel, they have some recent videos about the progress of building out SpaceX facilities in Canaveral. So there's a lot of empty land here. There's a lot of opportunity to grow here. A lot of opportunity to do great things in Florida. I, I should I should have mentioned when I talked about Disney and Universal, you know, attractions to being in Orlando and Florida. Florida has so much coastline. You can go to the beach. You're anywhere in Florida. You're an hour from the beach. I'm the beach is right here, but you know you can be close to the beach whenever you want. You can choose to live closer to the beach. You can watch rocket launches from Orlando. <laughs> I try to watch rocket launches as much as possible. There's just just so much cool stuff happening here. So. I'm not saying Tesla will build Giga Orlando. I do think that it's an excellent choice. I think in a lot of ways, it's a better choice than in a lot of other places I hear. People are moving here. People like living here. It's a fun place to be. There's a lot of tech opportunities. It's a very business-friendly state. You know, and all the other states were closing down. Governor DeSantis, like him or not, Governor DeSantis kept the state open. If you wanted your kids in school, Governor DeSantis got your kids back in school. I think if you're choosing a place, you know, we'll see how long he's here. He's at least, hopefully, at least. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I, I normally don't like Republicans or Democrats, but I did vote for DeSantis, and I'm very happy with how he's been doing in the state. Not a libertarian. He's not what I would really like, but by, by my sta by the standards of uh, Democrats and Republicans, all these other politicians, whether it's Trump or Biden or whatever, DeSantis has been a lot better than that lot. Yes, he's not perfect. There's some things he's done I don't like. What do you think of Giga Orlando? Let me know in the comments below. Check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com. Cybertruck t-shirts, one of the most popular t-shirts at elonbits.com. Please check out my other videos. Support this channel on the Locals platform on Patreon or as a YouTube channel member. Links to everything in the description below. Please like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Click the bell if you want to get notifications. And thank you so much for watching.